Hello, Minasan. Hi, my master. I'll start now. Um, so today my topic is opti optimizing microservices with WebAssembly and Linux containers. Uh, so this is my GitHub handle and Twitter handle. And uh, the below GitHub repo is our open source project called uh, What's a Match. Uh, so I will talk about the following several topics and the first a little bit about me and what the match and second a microservice architecture and problems and uh, WebAssembly containers as an alternative to Linux containers and the container tools that support WordM containers and cases when WordM containers are preferred uh, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm a DevRel and Foundry member of Wasm Edge, and also I've been an ambassador for Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And I organize um, different meetups and uh, conferences. So uh, below here is a meetup group I, or I, I organize. It's a Wasm and Rust meetup in Beijing. And I give talks at uh, KubeCon and uh, the other conferences. And also I write some technical blogs and articles. And also I do some translation for uh, technology articles. And also I commit uh, those documentation on GitHub. OK. So it's a bit uh, low, I guess. Yeah, I will just do that. So, um, so uh, what's the match? Uh, it's a WebAssembly runtime. So when you think about WebAssembly, you um, before would uh, think that uh, it's usually used uh, in the browser, but uh, we are using it on the server side. So um, it can be a, a very uh, lightweight sandbox. Uh, for cloud native edge and decentralized cloud applications and it's a OCI compliant runtime and it powers uh, serverless apps and embedded functions and microservices and smart contract and IOT devices uh, also uh, recently we started to use it to run AI inference across devices um, it, you can even run it on your Mac and IOT device so um, these are the partners. I guess I will just um, uh, be really quick. So uh, recently we were accepted to NVIDIA Inception as well. And uh, uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, our integration into Open Function has been forwarded on Twitter by a lot of Japanese friends. And uh, yeah, these are some um, programs that are paid and you can join. So um, the first one is the Linux Foundation Mentorship and the, also uh, Google Season of Docs and Google Summer of Code. Uh, you can contribute really easily um, by looking. Uh, so all these different programs uh, have different tasks. Or you can just um, find the good first issue by searching our GitHub issues. Uh, it's really easy to start. Uh, so yeah. I will get into um, the microservice architecture. Uh, so I guess I think uh, for the cloud native age, uh, we are really familiar with the microservice concept. Uh, it's independently deployable and it helps the team to ship, uh, ship software quicker and it can be really resilient. So for uh, small teams, uh, it can, they can all uh, work independently on different microservices and iterate really fast. So the scaling can be really easy. And also maintenance is a very, would be very easy. And um, uh, so uh, for large and complex applications uh, with um, millions of users, like uh, for Twitter app or for TikTok app, uh, they usually have a uh, tens of thousands microservices behind it. 
Actually, um, last year when Elon Musk just took over Twitter, he said, uh, why uh, a simple app that just allow you to post 140 characters a tweet would have uh, tens of thousands microservices behind it? And he said, uh, I want to reduce it by 80%, but, but it's just how uh, the modern uh, complex application works so that the teams can work on different services and iterate fast. Um, and also for smaller teams, and the organization can use microservice architecture to quickly adapt to changes and new technologies. Uh, so this is a typical uh, microservice uh, architecture. Uh, so, uh, like Twitter, it might, might have a mobile app and then a browse, browser, uh, the web app, and it's uh, like that. It can have a, uh, oh, oh, actually, this one is more like an um, e commerce app. So, they have inventory and shipping a database, um, so, and also, also account, account database. So, uh, I would use um, second hand e commerce app uh, FireMouse as an example to talk about it because we have a, a, cli um, a client who have been using Wasm containers uh, to get running side by side. So Wasm containers run side by side with, with their uh, Linux containers. Um, for a different programming language, so um, wh why they choose the uh, microservice arch architecture is also because they can choose the optimal programming language for different uh, s services. Uh, uh, and um, so when traffic enters through a gateway, it's uh, distributed to uh, various services and they can be written in different um, programming languages. And um, uh, each uh, micro microservice would exist independently and it has its own storage and caching system and uh, the services communicate with each other through RPCs or messaging queues. So that is decoupled. And, um, and this is uh, the architecture they, uh, they, deploy, they deploy this on uh, cloud. It can be AWS or it can be uh, other cloud. So it, uh, the e-commerce app I talk about the, the e-commerce platform. So they also have a web page, a website app. So it's um, grew from a small startup uh, from w with 10,000 active, uh, 10,000 of active users to 100,000 active, active users. And they used to use um, virtual machines and then use cloud technology and the ECS and then um, changed to EKS. Uh, so that to be better integrated to the cloud ecosystem. And um, um, the reason is that in this way, they can reduce costs and increase efficiency and do auto scaling. Um, but uh, with the current um, microservice architecture, they, there can be a lot of problems. So uh, the first one is heavy weight. Uh, so uh, right now the container, the Linux container would have the container and the Linux uh, operation system and framework, and also the application. So it can uh, have a long startup time and uh, or need to be warmed up. And uh, there would be trade-offs between security and risk and uh, security and the cost because um, you would have a, a very uh, long supply chain and big uh, attacking surface. Uh, so that's why we would need uh, OpenSSF to uh, deal with this kind of risks. So it's a very hard balance for security and cost. And also the portability is uh, uh, not good enough. So um, it's, um, for example, like Docker, it can, uh, be run across different operation system, but it's uh, it's not completely cross platform for uh, different um, like uh, hardwares, and, um, and so um, to reduce costs, so 
the e-commerce startup I mentioned, they want to transition some microservices in, to serverless, but uh, serverless also introduce the new challenge that is also the startup time. So if the service is uh, 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 like the serverless function can, uh, is idle for some time, um, you still have to load the runtime environment and initialize the function and then execute the code. So it can be really slow. And in order to mm, make it not so slow, you have to uh, run, run in all the uh, time in order to, for the users to have a very good experience. So that would uh, greatly increase your cost. So why hybrid containers? So that's um, when we introduce a WASM container. Uh, so uh, compared with Linux container, um, the hybrid container uh, can help uh, leverage the advantage of different containers. Like, um, for example, the traditional uh, Traditional Linux containers like Docker can be can have very mature ecosystem, and um, uh, WebAssembly uh, runtime would have a con WebAssembly containers would have a m much more lightweight and fast startup and uh, higher performance. So um, let's look at the involvement of. Wasm. So it started from uh, in 2010. Uh, the Alan Zakai has um, uh, is aiming to improve JavaScript performance. So um, later, uh, WebAssembly has been adopted as a W3C standard, and uh, uh, later, um, until uh, fast forward to 2019. Uh, the WebAssembly system interface is released so that uh, Wasm can access systems and the, the server si side Wasm is going mainstream. And uh, um, to 2022, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation has um, did this survey called uh, uh, the State of WebAssembly in 2002 and the key finding is just one that is uh, containers are, are the new normal and web assembly is the future. Um, so uh, this is last year. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, actually this is this year. So it's uh, this landscape is launched um, several, se several months ago um, by CNCF Foundation. So um, this is a dedicated uh, landscape, especially for Wadam. So um, you can see there are different projects uh, for the languages, runtimes, application fr frameworks, edge, and uh, AI, and embedded functions, and et cetera. Um, so the combined, fu combined funding of all these projects have uh, reached uh, $58.4 billion. Uh, so we would think WASM is to uh, in some cases, replace containers or run side by side with uh, traditional Linux containers, especially in uh, edge use cases. Uh, so uh, we would think the first generation of uh, virtualization would be uh, hypervisor VMs and uh, uh, micro VMs, and also uh, like um, AWS Firecracker. Um, and the second generation of containerization would be be um, more like Docker on the cloud. And uh, the, we would think the uh, third generation of uh, virtualization would be uh, the more high level language virtual machines like V8 or WebAssembly. And uh, this um, is a tweet by, uh, uh, a quote by uh, Tyler McMullen. Uh, He's a um, Fastly CTO, and uh, Fastly is the world's um, number one CDN provider. 
So he says um, a virtual machine is uh, emulating a computer. A container is emulating a, a private operations uh, operating system, and the WebAssembly instance is uh, emulating a process. So this is um, CEO of Docker. So when he saw in 2019 the um, release of WebAssembly, a uh, WASI is a WebAssembly system interface. He said that if um, WASM and WASI existed in 2008, we wouldn't have needed Docker at all. And uh, WebAssembly on the server is the future of computing. So, um, yeah. And uh, then last year, he also said uh, Docker, um, oh, and the reason why uh, the tweet on the right side is because uh, Docker has integrated Wasm in, into it. So um, Docker uh, desk, desktop would uh, have uh, Wasm runtime uh, already integrated inside it. So um, when you run some Wasm file uh, inside inside Docker, it will automatically use uh, the uh, Wasm runtime like Wasm Edge. So um, he said uh, he he saw the uh, Docker's integration with Wasm, and uh, he said that uh, uh, it makes perfect sense, and we no longer live in a single runtime world. So there are Linux containers, Windows containers, and Wasm containers. OCI can. Uh, package them all, and I should be able to build and run them all with Docker. So uh, we would think uh, Wasm is an alternative to Linux containers, and here are some advantages. So it's one uh, hundred uh, size of a Linux image and one thousand times faster startup time. Um, so for this uh, statistics, there are uh, there is a paper. Uh, on IEEE, and um, uh, you can look it up. And uh, it's especially uh, fast with uh, AOT, AOT, and uh, also um, it can reach a near native runtime performance and secure by default. So because it has a really small attack surface and uh, it's fully portable across different platforms and it's compatible with uh, uh, Kubernetes and other uh, uh, service mesh like STO and uh, distributed runtime like uh, Dapper. So the comp the container would uh, usually require namespaces, uh, cgroups, and file system, but Wasm do, uh, doesn't need or require them. And these are some more um, detailed comparison. So um, the uh, Disk footprint, startup performance, runtime performance, and uh, the uh, host OS, and etc. So uh, I guess I will um, make it quicker. And then uh, also safety and security and isolation. So um, for uh, so some of them are, I've already mentioned. So um, like the software supply chain security. Uh, so for web assembly, it uh, must be um, clearly declared that uh, certain files can be accessed. So it's signed modules. And um, also um, for management and orchestration, it uh, works with uh, Kubernetes perfectly. And also for orchestration on the edge, uh, some edge use cases that, uh, or IoT use cases, there are also uh, some orchestration tools like uh, Cube Edge, Super Edge, and et cetera. And it can be managed by container tools. Also uh, ecosystem, uh, like uh, you can see it's, uh, what is uh, uh, WC, C and OCI standard combined. Uh, so this is a test by uh, ARM. Uh, the link is on below there. So um, it's not actual um, 
actual production code, but it's just for test. So you can see um, that's the Rust code um, in between. Uh, and then um, the, so, so this page is the first test. It compares the size of a regular Rust binary uh, with a WebAssembly binary file. And uh, one is um, uh, 1.8 megabytes, another is 0.8. So this is a, a really simple one. So it doesn't really, um, so it, like in production, it usually would be much more complex. And um, so, so this is, um, oh, uh, so th that's when uh, a, a use case that is much more uh, complicated it would the different the size differences would be much larger and uh, also the boot time uh, you can see uh, for the startup time for Wadham is 25% uh, of a regular container um, so this is also a, a survey of 2023 so the reason why Devs would use WebAssembly would be this, uh, like loading time and everything. Um, and also, uh, the, you can see um, out of 100% of people who, who are being surveyed, 34% uh, have uh, heard of WASI and uh, planning to use it in the next uh, year. And uh, also 34% have um, being currently using uh, WASI in their project. So the, uh, the following are uh, some container tools that support WASM containers. Uh, this uh, is uh, CRUN has added uh, WASM magic support and uh, it can recompile CRUN and uh, add WASM edge. And uh, CRUN would decide uh, based on the image annotation, whether to start a WASM runtime or a Linux container. And um, also there is an out of box version of uh, WASM Edge on Fedora. And uh, you can also use uh, container dshim to start the WASM container through run WASD. And container D would check the target platform of the image, whether it is a uh, WASM 33 or x86 or ARM. And um, so uh, this is what I mentioned already. Uh, Docker Desktop has integrated the uh, WASM runtime. It's not only WASM Edge. Uh, later, they also have other WASM runtimes integrated. And uh, tool support for packaging Im images uh, is uh, Builda and uh, Docker. So. Um, the use case in production. So use uh, Kubernetes to manage uh, WASM containers and Linux containers. Uh, so um, when, uh, when WASM is uh, needed, so uh, like for the uh, serverless use cases, we would use uh, WASM containers to uh, store data received by the front end into MySQL and uh, uh, Ninjix and MySQL runs in the Linux containers. So the uh, yellow part is running Linux containers and the green part is run in WASM runtime. And you can check out the uh, repo of this uh, demo. And uh, it's um, very uh, optimized the startup time, response time, and uh, uh, memory usage. And also uh, for log processing, it syncs uh, MySQL bin log to Kafka using WASM container. And uh, uh, while the yellow part, MySQL bin log and Kafka still run in the uh, Linux container. And uh, so we all know that uh, large language models have been really popular. So WASM is also really, really, um, good for running AI inference. And uh, it's 
uh, actually not only large language model we are inferring, but also a more traditional one like um, TensorFlow and PyTorch. So it surpassed the request uh, received by the front end to the AI inference function. And the AI inference function run in uh, Wasm containers and Wasm would return the inference result to the uh, front end. Uh, so I will show you a very quick demo uh, of uh, running LLM. On, it, it can be on your Mac or on any uh, IoT devices. Uh, it's only four commands. So why we do that? Why we not use a Python and like the traditional way? Uh, because uh, it can have automatic GPU detection and the inference app um, is only uh, two megabytes. So there's no uh, Python dependencies and it's completely cross platform. So uh, this is the f these are the four commands I mentioned. So you just um, do these three steps and uh, uh, put, uh, op just uh, do it in your terminal, and it's uh, it can be really easy. Especially in the cases that um, uh, services like OpenAI can go down, and you can have a, your own self-hosted large language model service. Uh, so it's not only um, that, but you can also have uh, OpenAI compatible API service with that. So it's also really easy, just uh, three commands, and you can have uh, your own OpenAI compatible API server. Uh, so I will show you quickly how it works. So this is uh, running uh, the minstrel 7b instruct. So this this is to download the chat dot the, the chat app. And uh, you oh, oh okay, let me explain this here so uh, the first you install was the match and then uh, step two is your down you do uh, is download the models gguf file and the step three is um, to download a portable wasm file for the chat app so what do you see on the uh, demo is uh, downloading the wasm file for the chat app and uh, then you can chat with the model by uh, talking with it in your in your terminal oh, here so the, the question is um, give a brief overview of uh, ch Chinese cuisine. So the device is, I think, is a M2 with, uh, um, oh, it's a M1 with 32. Also, oh, that's the speed. The speed would be uh, 20 tokens per second, and uh, the device is um, M M1 with uh, 32 gigabytes memory so it's locally run on on your Mac okay. and then uh, so this is to Japanese um, developers who tried it out. And uh, yeah, it's uh, really impressed them. And uh, you can, so the link they gave is the tutorial for those uh, commands, and you can uh, f find it uh, on the Second State blog. So 
And also we have this uh, script to allow you to run with just uh, this um, one single uh, line of command. So it's uh, completely automatic. You, you just uh, enter it in your terminal and it uh, would allow you to uh, download the G GGUF file and then uh, also first what manage and then GGUF file and then the chat app. And um, then you can talk to your, oh, you, you will still need to choose a bit, uh, among the many, many models. Now we have uh, um, about 20, 20 open source mo models, 25 mo open source mo models. You have to choose among them. And then you need to download the model um, file you have. Uh, and then when you have finished all the downloading, you can start to ch chat with the, uh, AI inference app on your, uh, the large language model on your Mac. So the outlook, uh, yeah, I'm about to finish. So um, the entire ecosystem, so because Wasm has been really uh, emer a new emerging tech, so the ecosystem would need more work and uh, open source contributions as well. So the um, Rust language is uh, even though we say that Wasm uh, supports multiple languages like C, uh, Rust, C++, C++ and even uh, uh, Python and JavaScript, but uh, it's uh, 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 so you, you in order to uh, better utilize um, WebAssembly, uh, it's because Rust language compiles the best to Wasm file, so it's um, uh, for many developers. Um, if they want to get started, it might be um, for them. They might uh, be needing to study Rust, so that could could be a huge barrier because they would find it really hard to learn. So this is a small tool for uh, developers who want to learn Rust. It's uh, powered by. Um, oh, GP4, you can try it out. It's a chatbot to help you learn Rust. Uh, you can also try it on the web. And then the container tools uh, are not uh, the most optimized for Wasm containers because it, right now it's uh, more for the uh, Linux containers. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. This is my GitHub Twitter handle. And uh, I will also be sending the CNCF booth later. So, Thank you very much. If anyone has questions, I think we have some minutes. Hi. Thanks very much for the presentation. Um, I, like probably many other people in this room, I have not heard of these types of containers before, so it's very good oh, to learn. Um, I have a question. If I could ask you to go back to the slide where you had the survey results. There we go. Um, my question is very specifically on the 2% on the right. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested in whether or not you have any insights, and, and it kind of it leads to a broader question, which is you spent most of your presentation talking about a lot of really good reasons for why uh -huh. we should use this. Yes. What are the specific reasons why we should not use this? I think I, uh, my colleague would have a better answer for that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, WebSmell is a, a very good uh, uh, compared with the Linux containers, but uh, it's, um, it's, there is no free launch. Uh, if you want to use a WASM container in your production, you may need to rewrite your application in Rust. Um, you, uh, WebSmell can only run a WASM uh, bytecode. So uh, it's, it's not like uh, uh, Docker. Docker can run everything. But uh, uh, for WebSimile, you can compile Python easily into WASM code, and then you run a WASM container. So that's the um, that's why you not use a WASM. So, so Python can easily. So, so you're saying Python can easily compile into a WASM container, and Rust easily compiles. Uh, Python is not easily because Python has a runtime. Right. 
Oh, we can't compile uh, Python easily into a Watson, but Rust is a uh, Rust and C and C++ is a better choice to uh, compile them to Watson. Uh, I, I see. So, so in summary, if you are writing something in C or C++ or Rust today, you are a better candidate for this. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and also Go. Um, Go recently added a, a worthy support. So if you are Go developer, you can try to compile your Go application into Wasm. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, I have a very basic question because I'm also like quite new to this web assembly. So you have mentioned several concepts uh, like uh, WASI, like, uh, WASI, like WASI and WASM and also WASM Edge. Mm -hmm. uh, but sorry, I was a bit confused about those conceptions. Can you like kind of clarify the difference between them? Like what, what is WASM Edge? I, I wasn't very clear like throughout this presentation. Uh, WASM Edge is the runtime that uh, runs WASM file and Wasm, uh, so WebAssembly system interface WASI mm -hmm. is uh, uh, is allowing uh, Wasm file to uh, talk to the system to, to uh, connect uh, to talk with the external sub services like uh, it's an interface. Do you want to add more? <laughs> uh, so uh, WebAssembly is a uh, standard. Uh, it's the uh, it's uh, right now it's uh, managed by W3C. It's the W3C. Uh, W3C. Sorry, okay. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the fifth uh, standards for uh, W3C. So uh, WebAssembly is the standard, and uh, uh, was it uh, WebAssembly system interface is. Um, um, uh, it's, it allow a uh, web similar uh, WASM application to access the uh, uh, file system. Five. So you can use a uh, web simile on the zero side. So uh, w uh, we will have several, uh, uh, there are several uh, web simile runtimes uh, with different names. WASM Edge is one of this. And uh, we also, you, uh, if you use uh, Vite, Vite also is a, a web simile runtime. So it's just different concepts. WebSimile is um, uh, on top, and then we have different proposals. Uh, was is uh, uh, is one of the proposals, and then we have some um, uh, different uh, was runtimes. So, uh, like Sony is using Warmer, it's like uh, W A uh, M R, right, uh, to run. On their IoT devices, uh, wasm files, so to give their customer the best experiences. Uh, it's another runtime like wasm edge, uh, but with different um, advantages. <coughs> and also, there are more like uh, there are um, wasm time, and uh, also wasmer. There are different wasm runtimes. Uh, it depends on your specific needs, I guess. Uh, like for warmer, it's it's um, better. Do you want compatible? <laughs> Maintaining on uh, was much. So um, my answer is that <laughs> you should choose was much. But it depends on your use case. Uh, warmer is much smaller if you. Um, it can uh, run on a very, very small uh, device. Uh, device. Uh, but uh, 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 different runtimes have their diff uh, different, uh, different advantages. It depends on your case. So, but you should try what's mine first. <laughs> uh, also, what's the match is hosted by CNCF. So it's donated to CNCF. Hello, thanks for your talk. So previously you mentioned we are you are, you are changing from uh, serverless to uh, from microservice to serverless. So could you talk about what, what do you think the difference between microservice architecture to serverless architecture? What are the main difference? Uh, I guess you can 
still do microservices not serv in a serverless way, like uh, just uh, um, maybe not on because because serverless is like you um, start up the a service when it's used and then uh, automatic uh, and then it's uh, sh shut down uh, when when not needed but um, my I guess microservice it's more like um, you uh, like you run it on the server and the, oh sorry we, we don't have enough time but uh, I, I I think um, I, I think it's a concept on different level. So um, microservice is more like you um, you can also run it uh, on the server and keep it running all the time. But uh, uh, for service, it's more like you auto scale and then you scale it down. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's like that. Yeah, I will can talk more after this because we don't have enough time now. <laughs> okay, thank you.